Yesterday, Nigerian airline passengers departing for Dubai were prevented from boarding Turkish and Ethiopian airlines because the government of the United Arab Emirates had barred Nigerian travelers from the country, but later made a U-turn on their decision, although the UAE included the Democratic Republic of Congo on its travel ban list and blamed it on the surge of Omicron COVID-19 cases among Nigerian and DCR travelers. Many believed that the development may not be unconnected to the spat between the UAE and Nigeria. Nigeria and the UAE have been at loggerheads over the principle of reciprocity in the allocation of slots to airlines operating from both countries. The dispute has now blown up into, the full, into a full diplomatic spat certain to affect business and tourism between both nations. Now joining us to discuss the escalating tensions between Nigeria and the UAE, which have both pride themselves on their closeness and bilateral ties, is Ambassador Joe Keshi. Ambassador Keshi is a retired career diplomat who has served Nigeria in several countries and is a former permanent secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Good morning, sir, and welcome to the morning show. Well, let's start with uh, the UAE's ban on uh, Nigeria's uh, passengers departing for Dubai. Yesterday, there were many reports that indicated that, you know, N Nigerian passengers were prevented from boarding, really, the Ethiopian airlines. Only yesterday evening, they lifted that ban. But many are saying that it is not, it is definitely related to the spat. And it's not based on the Omicron COVID-19 variant like they have claimed. What is your take on that? Uh, first of all, good morning and thank you for having me. Of course, we all know very well that um, uh, what is happening is uh, a question of uh, uh, UAR trying to demonstrate that uh, might is right. Um, what are passengers, what Nigerian passengers experience has little or nothing to do with the COVID issue. It's just that they think that uh, we do not have the capacity, we do not have the capacity on a number of things and they think that by putting extra pressure on us, by making sure that our people suffer in places like Dubai and Ethiopia, that the federal government might be compelled, you know, to change its position as regards the the number of frequencies that uh, they are allowed to. And let's be very clear on this. They say there is an air service agreement between the two countries, and it's only fair that the, the, the contents of the, of the law is obeyed. If, I, if you give me 25 or 20, I give you 20. If you give me 10, I give you 10. It's almost an insult to tell us when we, you have signed an agreement that you, we will take 21 from you you can take one. I mean, what could be more unfair? But it just shows you what some of us have been saying for a long time, that we must do the best we can in this country to develop ourselves, to become an adult, and to have the capacity to challenge insults like this from uh, UAR. Can you imagine UAR? Yes, it's because we troop to UAR all the time. It's because our elites have found it as a paradise for their holidays. And they think that they can just throw anything at us. And because we love to come there, we love to do all sorts of things in Dubai, that we will, we will cave in and allow 25 flights into Nigeria and only one flight from Nigeria to you know, uh, Dubai. And we was still in an airport that is uh, you know, quite far away from uh, most uh, business centers. I mean, it's absolutely unfair. And I think we should commend the federal government for standing firm on the issue. All right. Okay, Ambassador Kechi, I don't know, does it bother you that this is happening shortly after our president, President Muhammadu Buhari, visited, <coughs> visited Dubai, Nigeria participated in the Dubai Expo 2020? Because at the level of international relations, when you have this person-to-person -person, uh, contact between presidents, and shortly we are having this kind of spat, does it bother you at all? No, ab absolute, absolutely, absolutely. I repeat that word again, absolutely. In the first place, look, in the first place, I remember, you know, during my service years, 
We, 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 we pay very close attention to presidential visits and why a president should leave this country to visit any country at all. Look, I told some friends who were worried that um, uh, Nigeria might ban the, the flight, to, uh, flight to South Africa because of the Omicron. And I said to them, no, the president of South Africa is expected in this country in a few days' time. And I don't see Nigeria in its right senses banning any flight from South Africa. Not even a few days after the president has left. Even if they're going to do anything, it might take a couple of weeks and months. And the president of Nigeria just left your country, you know, and the next thing you did was to start embarrassing a whole country like Nigeria. Again, it boils down to something as simple as the fact that they, are, they believe that, oh, we so love their country, we can do anything to be in Dubai for Christmas holidays, and they can put pressure on us. Look, for we elites, and I, I put myself in there, we should honestly begin to think seriously about this country and about a, a building up the capacity for this country to do a lot of things for itself and stop taking insults, you know, from these, uh, from these uh, countries, you know. There's absolutely nothing wrong in what has been done. The law is very clear. The BASA agreement is very clear. I've been involved in a number of uh, BASA agreements over the years. And I know that the federal government is right to insist that you give us what is in the, in the books and don't just dictate to us. I mean, the fact that you even dictate to us, you say you will take 21 or 20 flights and we will take one, it's an absolute insult on this country. And we must face the reality. So let nobody cry over the fact that I'm not, I can, I'm not going to spend the holidays in Dubai as planned or blah, 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 blah. No. For once, let's support this government to teach these people a lesson that, look, at the end of the day, yes, some Nigerians will suffer, but they would also lose financially. How many people from UAR come to this country? Practically very few, if any. But a lot of Nigerians travel to Dubai. And so they make money, which for now they will lose, particularly during this Christmas period. So we have something, an advantage that we can play on, and I sincerely hope that we play on it. So how, how come we have become so low that people just disrespect us as we are, and we don't fight back? And I say that deliberately because now we are saying we are exploring diplomatic means with UAE that has shown utter disrespect over the years. I mean, I thought we would have stayed this out rather than explore diplomatic means with the UAE. And like you said, Radley, it's not that there's anything fantastic about going there because the last time I checked, the UAE is, is nine hours to London. So it's not a great place for connecting flights into London or Europe or the likes. Or, and you know, it's a yeah, passageway to America, but not as exciting as it is, you know, to hold a jugulars the way they are doing. Look, uh, Suleiman, you, you, <laughs> uh, to the first part of your question, uh, I catch you guys and uh, I catch you guys a lot of uh, mornings and listening to each and every one of you. You've been very consistent about your views about this country and what uh, is going on in this country. So. The, 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 the first question, let me just say, it's, it's closely related to how you feel about how we have underdeveloped ourselves over the, over the last couple of years. And in doing that, we brought a lot of disrespect to, you know, uh, to, to this country. Uh, and, uh, and, and the second thing, of course, is that, look, it, it boils down to the fact that it's a, it's a problem now of, of the elites themselves. Because you mentioned that UAR is uh, uh, nine hours away to, to London, but to some extent, it's, uh, uh, the, the cost of flying from here via to London, I think, is cheaper, if I'm right. And because BA itself, or the uh, British Airways, over the years have made its, its flight very expensive. And of course, when you look at the bulk of the people flying uh, <laughs> BA, you find out where the money is coming from. It's from the people's purse. You know, anytime you look, there are business people, the companies pay, government officials, the government pay. Only very few individuals on their own actually travel to, this, to these countries. And I remember at one time, I think there was a minister who actually tried to persuade 
be able to reduce its cost and make it, you know, fair enough in comparison to, say, like uh, Ghana and uh, neighboring countries. But they refused. And we just keep, you know, look, if we all, I, I read somebody who said, look, very well, let all of us stay in this country and suffer the consequences because we have failed to develop our co own country. At the end of the day, nothing can save us from all these uh, inconsistencies and abuses and uh, insults from the rest of the world if we do not grow up and become an adult. I keep using that word, if we do not grow up and become an adult, if we do not stop this on that development, reverse course, you know, and begin to develop our own country ourselves. Nothing will stop the insult until we, are, we have the capacity to deal with insults like this. Okay. okay. Uh, Rufai, anyway, I just, just for correction, uh, Ambassador Jokeshi, Rufai, not Suleiman. Thank oh. you, sir. <laughs> Rufai, sorry, 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 Rufai. Sorry. Suleiman, Rufai. Sorry, well, sorry. If I can jump in here. In resolving uh, situations like these, at least one of the parties needs to compromise, right, depending on the perception of who needs the other more. Now, where does the balance of power lie between Nigeria and the UAE? What leverage does Nigeria have, you know, going into negotiations like this? Our, our, our leverage is very limited, very, very limited. Because at the end of the day, the bulk of those who we suffer are Nigerians. How many UAE nationals travel to Nigeria either for business or for pleasure or for holidays? You can almost say zero or just say zero, zero, zero point one percent. How many Nigerians travel to Dubai throughout the whole year, not to talk of during the Christmas period? You can also talk of hundreds. So they are acting from a position of strength. We are acting from a position of weakness. But you know what? Even from that position of weakness, we can still teach them a lesson to say, look, it makes no difference whether you guys uh, you know, want to leave the ban or not. We will not compromise until you ensure that our airline, the only airline with the capacity to go to your country, flies 20 flights a week to Dubai and also will land at the Dubai International Airport. Not airport far away somewhere, that everybody now has to take and pay another fare taxes to get into Dubai City. He said, no, I think we should just stand our ground. When they come to their senses, I can assure you that they will return to the negotiating table. Yes, we are disadvantaged, but we are not totally disadvantaged at this point in time. We still have the aces that we can play, and we should just stick to it. Okay, Ambassador Ketchi, um, for all we care about bilateral air service agreements, principle of reciprocity, we know that most countries, most serious countries, Nigeria have this bilateral service agreement with. We cannot meet our own quota, either because we don't have enough airlines or the few airlines that are there cannot even meet is it not because we don't have capacity that countries like Dubai, like the United Arab Emirates, are also taking advantage of us? We don't have the capacity. We've not been able to meet our quota in many bilateral air service agreements with different countries, not just uh, um, United Arab Emirates. Yeah, you're, you're, absolutely, you're absolutely right. You know, we can also ask the question, if, we, if, um, if uh, APs can go to Dubai, why can't APs not go to London? We're actually just fighting uh, UAR, but I'm not even sure APs or any Nigerian uh, you know, airline has uh, the right or have been given the right to go to, um, uh, to fly into London. And, and even when they do, <laughs> they are going to be sent to... to, yeah, to to Gatwick. Or Stansted Stans Airport. Yeah, they'll, they'll be sent to Gatwick. Look, it, bo it boils down to us developing ourselves. It boils down to building that capacity. It boils down to running an efficient you know, system that not only we as Nigerians can trust, but the rest of the, uh, of the international community can respect. 
Look, nobody respects a weakling, for goodness sake. Nobody does. You know, but I'm saying on the, on, with regard to this issue, we are not totally disadvantaged. If some of us do not go to Dubai this year, heavens will not fall and we will not die. So we can all just stay at home and enjoy the Christmas. For me, that's just the, and the federal government, look, I read in, I think it was the Guardian this morning about diplomatic uh, efforts to resolve it. But I think that is more in relation to to UK and other countries. Yeah, that makes, that, makes some, uh, that makes some sense. But with regards to you, look, if I was still in, uh, if I was still in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, I would certainly not recommend that we even send a delegation or we listen to anything about diplomatic settlement. They must come to their senses. And if they don't want to come, I can assure you that if we maintain our stand within now and the next couple of weeks or one month, when they look at their balance sheet and they see how much they are losing from not going to Nigeria, they will be the one to propose a compromise. All right. And that's the honest truth. So, Ambassador, can we also extend this fight to what is happening in Dubai as we speak against Nigerians that live and work in the UAE? Hear this story. We are starving here. Nigerians in the UAE lament work permit restriction. The authorities in the UAE have been denying a lot of Nigerians work permit restrictions, and that's deliberate. And only to think that the president well, look. Was, in, <coughs> was in Dubai for the Dubai Expo recently, all right, and a lot of Nigerians are doing great things in Dubai, and they are denying Nigerians work permits. So can we also use this to fight look. that cause? They, well, look, let's not... There are two different things, and let's treat them differently. The whole issue of work permit is, again, I, make, uh, I should say this, it's not limited to, you know, to Nigerians alone, or even the fact that uh, the condition in which people work in uh, places like UAE, uh, Qatar, and the rest, you know, uh, they're, they're different board games, and so let's, let's treat them differently. I think the solution to what's happening in terms of work permit, we need to do what a couple of uh, countries have done, is to get into some uh, labor agreement with UAE that would guarantee, you know, uh, employment for our people and make it easier for them to be able to get, uh, uh, to get work permit. Uh, you know, that's the only way out, but we must separate the two. We must deal with the airline issue separately and the issue of work permit we also need to deal separately. We need to bring in the labor offices and let them begin to negotiate a labor agreement between Nigeria and, um, and UAE that ensures that our people can, you know, have uh, not just gainful employment, but, you know, have other rights when they're in, uh, in that country. But even despite the challenges and the difficulties, a lot of Nigerians are living in that country and they are doing relatively good for themselves. But they are both diplomatic issues and they are pertinent diplomatic issues since we are looking at diplomatic routes now. They are both diplomatic issues. The case of air peace is just a microcosm yeah, it, it, of the fact that these people don't respect us. It's a diplomatic issue too. You are, you are, yes, you are right. It's a diplomatic issue, but look. How did other countries resolve that? They, re they resolved it by agreeing to a labor agreement between their country and UAR. Look, there was a time, there was a time the condition of, um, I think it was the Indians, the Pakistanis, Pakistanis and the rest. It was really very hopeless until they sat down together and got into an agreement, you know, that resolved some of these issues. Despite that, there are still problems. And we need to understand. Uh, we need to understand this. And also, let's let's also let's be honest here and admit this. Part of the problem for uh, for Nigerians working in that also has to do with the, the 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 mindset, the conception of the authorities about Nigerians. Because what you've seen a lot of Nigerians do in that country. So it's like you have the good, the bad, and the ugly. Unfortunately. It is the good and the, and the ugly. I mean, it is the bad and the ugly that creates some of these problems for the good. And we must admit that to ourselves, you know. Let's be honest with ourselves. 
All right. So, so from your experience in diplomacy, right, how do you think this will all play out? I mean, and what's uh, the best advice you can give? Well, you know, it appears from recent reports now, you know, last night the UAE lifted that restriction um, on Nigerian travelers to enter Dubai. And also, I believe recent reports are showing that um, UAE have agreed to grant air peace one slot into Dubai, which was one of the biggest issues. And if you could recall, um, Hadi Sirika had said in that leaked voice note, that voice note that circulated on social media, based on the BASA agreement, he wanted to call for 21 slots. Look, the, the only way to resolve this is for us to go back and look at what the air services, I mean, air service agreement between Nigeria and UAR said, if each country is entitled to 10 to 15 to 21 flights, we should be given our own 21 flights. Now, it is left to us if we do not have the capacity. If Air Peace has the capacity to fly only to make 10 flights in a week, fair enough. You don't blame UAR for that. But they must give us the slots. That's the most important thing. They, look, there should be no negotiation on this at all. Because you can't come in into, look, again, it goes back to some of the uh, mistakes and um, what do you call it, uh, policy somersaults we've done in this country over the years. There was a time in this country that our, our desire was to make uh, Lagos Airport the hub, you know, uh, the hub, and every international flight was to fly into Lagos and from Lagos, local flights will begin to distribute, uh, you know. And we are not the only country that came up with, so a number of countries, you know, do that. They have a hub, and local air flights now help to distribute passengers. Now, but we have just opened up our airspace to everybody. You can now fly into any part of Nigeria, you know, because of changes in policies and so on. No, we need to take a closer look at some of these uh, some of these uh, issues. But with regard to what is going on currently between us and UAR, it's simply very easy. If the air service agreement says Nigeria is entitled to 10 flights a day to UAR, for goodness sake, let's have 10 flights. If um, uh, um, Emirates is entitled to 10 flights into Nigeria, let's have 10, 10 flights. Now, if they want to fly into two uh, airports, Lagos and Abuja, fair enough. So give us also two airports, your main airport and one other one. I believe we can live with that. Okay, Ambassador Kechi, what you are recommending, if I get you right, you are saying the day the weakling stands up to fight the bully, the bully will also do a rethink. So this time around, we should go of out, out of and course. fight it out. That's what you are recommending. Uh, of course, look, it, it's, it's a way of life. Look, at some point in time, a man got to do what a man got to do, believe it or not. At some point in a, one's life, a man got to do what a man got to do. You see, if we fight this, to, this fight to its logical conclusion, I make the point that yes, we are disadvantaged, but not to the extent that we take all the insults that they throw at us. We say have cards that we can play. And that card is that they are making more in terms of financial gains than us. But at the same time, we are also, conf uh, we are also conscious of the fact that a number of Nigerians go to Dubai, apart from holidays and so on, to do business. Some have their business uh, offices there and things like that. All this must be taken into consideration. So if they want to give us one flight, let us give them also one flight. If they want airpiece to go to another airport, we should give them uh, Madugri Airport. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Pure and simple. 50, 50. When you do this to them, they will come, to, again, I make the point, they will come to their senses, you know, at the end of the day. For now, they are losing more than we are losing. And of course, airpiece is losing uh, uh, some revenue too, but this is a worthy fight that uh, we must, uh, uh, you know, take to its logical conclusion. And the logical conclusion is that there's an agreement signed some years ago. We need to go back to that agreement. If it says Nigeria is entitled to 10, 15, 20, 100 flights, UAR is entitled to the same thing, 
let everybody get what it deserves or what the BASA agreement says, there'll be peace. Well, we hope there'll right. be peace in, between Nigeria and the UAE. All right, Ambassador thank, thank, Kassi, thank, thank you, you so much, Ambassador Joseph.